Time now for the business day. The Jamaica Employers Federation, JEF, is not in support of a proposal for the creation of a state-run pension scheme to which all workers would be required to make contributions. President of the Federation, David Wan, was speaking on RGR's Beyond the Headlines yesterday. TVJ's Andrew Laidley reports. President of the Union of Clerical, Administrative and Supervisory Employees, Vincent Morrison, who made the suggestion, says the proposed facility would be similar to the National Housing Trust, NHT. But Jeff President David Wan has presented an alternative. He wants the national insurance scheme to be modified instead. Let us look at the deficiencies in NIA and let us see if it can be amended to cover what Mr. Morrison is asking to be done meaning coverage of a pension more adequate than NIS for all categories of workers. And as I understand it, self-employed can also contribute to NIS, so they're not, you know, out of the NIS system. So I would prefer to see NIS modified. Mr. Wan argues that the proposed pension facility would result in duplication of some benefits already provided by the NIS. I wouldn't want us at this stage to go create a whole new infrastructure to cover the same people who are already covered by NIS because I think it can be amended. The Jeff president said while he believes all employers should offer a pension scheme for workers, it is challenging for smaller operators to do so. Managing your own pension fund is very cumbersome and lots of regulation. So the vast majority of small and medium enterprises who do participate in a pension plan, they take them to one of the major pension fund managers and take a share in that big pool that the large pension managers um, have. And I know quite a few small and medium enterprises who do um, take out contributions from their employees and put into private pension schemes. Andrew Laidley, TVJ News. A general manager at Caribbean Cement Company, Peter Donkersloot, says the company is closer to acquiring the lease on Rockfort Mineral Bath. Speaking to shareholders at the company's annual general meeting recently, he advised that the company plans to make several renovations to the facility. Last year I told you that we were negotiating a 10-year lease. Well, finally we were close to signing that 10-year lease with the government to extend the 10-year lease, and we couldn't invest in the property without having a lease because it would be unwise to invest in something that then they're going to take away from you. So I'm telling you this because uh, as we are close to having that lease signed, we're going to invest first on doing a facelift to the public bath, around 15 million Jamaican dollars we're going to put there. Second, we're going to rehabilitate the, pub, the private bath, which is something that has been closed for the past 15 years, according to my, my, the information I have gathered. Now, the Carib, the Carib Cement General Manager also disclosed that there are plans to revive the fort at the location as a tourist we're attraction. Going to, we're going to recover the fort, the fort part, and we're going to invest $25 million there. So around this all, we're going to commit $60 million within the next 10 years to invest in RMBC. And, and uh, uh, this should start around six months after we get the lease finalized. Sagicor Group is partnering with the University of Technology to develop a new financial technology platforms. President of UTech, Professor Stephen Vassiani, and the CEO of Sagicor Group, Christopher Zaka, signed a memorandum of understanding with hopes of developing the next breakthrough technology in the financial market. The MOU is for an initial period of five years and will see the two entities collaborating and sharing joint information on ICT services. And that's the business day when we come back, international stories. Please stay with us.